for the second part of our investigation of background music with a different group of pupils, we've changed the parameters a bit. The second lesson starts without music as before. Then again, music is going to be played in. But this time it will then be removed for the last 15 minutes of the lesson. In the past, that can have quite a dramatic effect. I've done demonstrations with adults where they've been quite calm, paying attention. The music has been taken away, and they start having side conversations and they make up some water and cups of tea. Right. So we've got potassium, hydroxide, and remember that's It's a chemistry lesson and a room full of lads for John Crawshaw to deal with. Look this way. Look this way. Look this way. Look this way. I am. The teacher's demeanour has changed. He's obviously anticipated the class being a lot livelier and noisier than previously. So he's already shushing them a lot and trying to calm them down. The other thing is when he asks questions, rather than seeing lots of hands shooting to give answers as we saw with the first class, there's a lot of calling out. A lot noisier than last time. The task set are similar to the first lesson. Collaborative working is going to be needed. Pick one of them up, put it down, and then see if you can join one onto either end. As the lesson gets underway, some groups get straight on task. Again, no music is playing for the first 20 minutes or so. One group seems a little distracted, and this group seem to have an odd man out. One member is clearly not engaging with the other two. OK, well, time to put the music on. Let's see how they get on. The room immediately feels like a more pleasant place to be in. And of course, that's, that's as important for the teacher as it is for children. Because obviously what, what I'd like is for the teachers to be enjoying their job way more than they, than some of them currently are. Well, I think again, you see there's a little bit more calmness. Um, but what's interesting as well is to look at the interactions that are going on. And um, the young group we were talking about before, there's a little bit more inclusion going on now. They seem to be communicating between the three of them rather than just in a two. So, and um, the person who wasn't engaged, his body language has changed. He's leaning more into the group rather than out of the group. So clearly, he's become more engaged in the task than what they're supposed to be doing. With the music now playing, curiously, the level of chatter in the room seems to have gone up. What you'll find is there's a lot of chat going on, perhaps even more than before, but it's what it's focused on that matters. They're having a good time, they're laughing, they're joking, but it's all on task. Now teacher John seems noticeably calmer. His voice is lowered, and there's some hands going up to answer his question. How many elements are there? I do feel quite relaxed, yeah. I think it is quite nice music. It's, it's not there, it's not in your face all the time, but it is pleasant. It does seem to be set up a nice atmosphere. Time to take the music away again. What's going to happen now? Listen to it now, the noise level is starting to go up gradually. There's more shouting, sir. Chairs start to scrape a little bit there as well. What's interesting is the boys at the front. There's a lot more looking around the classroom. There's also a little bit, a little bit of physical altercation going on, a little bit of pushing and, and shoving, which is quite interesting because it looks as if gradually they are starting to move off task. We've been getting up and walking around a lot more, a lot more shouting out about things as well. And John's having to impose himself a little more. Even our teacher's more yeah. agitated. Can you put those cards back in there, please? Thank you for your time today. Off you go. With the experiment finished, what's the verdict from the teacher? Did the music help? Well, I thought it was very interesting. I thought it did seem to have a calming effect on the pupils. Especially the second group. When that came on, I thought they were more quiet. What might be interesting is varying some of the conditions in the classroom. So try and play the music at different times, different sort of um, levels uh, as well, and with different classroom groups. Yeah. Good be interesting. And what's our psychologist's observation of John the teacher? We did notice that when we turned the music off, that um, he was a lot 
a lot less calm. Again, we saw that sort of uh, physical movement, tapping of fingers, a little bit more agitation. Um, whether he noticed that himself or not, I don't know. Uh, I didn't know it was visible, but I did feel a bit calmer when it was on. Right. I did. So, is there a new convert to music in the classroom? Yeah, I'd give it a go. I did feel, I felt better myself when it was on. I thought the kids worked better when it was on. Uh, so yeah, I'd give it a go. Whether background music raises standards of learning is open to debate. But in our experiment, it did seem to help teachers and pupils become calmer and more concentrated. Bo Fletcher is certainly convinced of its potential. This is probably the most important thing I've ever done in my life. Because the way I figure it is, if I can help children learn better, then those children will have greater self-esteem. And when they grow up, they'll be better parents, so they'll be finer human beings. And that's, that's my aim. That's my aim.